Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find peak element. We're given an array of integers and they don't mention it here. It's mentioned all the way at the bottom of the description, but it's a very important fact. And it is that any two adjacent elements, suppose a number at index i, and a number at index i plus one, these are never going to be equal. So any adjacent elements in the array are not going to be equal. That's a very important fact for this problem. So I wanted to mention it at the beginning. We want to find a peak element within this array. A peak element is kind of how it sounds. So imagine that there are three elements. The peak element is the one that is greater than both of its adjacent neighbors. Now it's possible that there could be multiple peak elements. That's okay, we can return any of them. So we could return this one or this one. Now what if our array looks something like this, three, two, one. At first glance, there aren't any peak elements in this array, but the way they define peak elements, these endpoint values, suppose three, it's greater than its right neighbor, but it doesn't have a left neighbor. So can this be a peak element? Well, the answer is yes. Any endpoint value like three is implicitly assumed to be greater than its neighbor if its neighbor doesn't exist. So if its left neighbor doesn't exist, three is considered to be greater than its left neighbor. For one, since its right neighbor doesn't exist, it's assumed to be greater than its right neighbor. Now it's not greater than its left neighbor, so this is not a peak element, but three is a peak element. It's greater than this and it's greater than this. Given those facts, we are guaranteed that there's going to be a peak element in this array. Our goal is to find it. It'd be pretty easy to do with a linear scan, but they actually want us to do better. We want to do this in log n time. Are there any algorithms you can think of that are log n time? Well, pretty much the only one that would work in this case is binary search. But is it even possible to run binary search on this problem? Well, let's go back to basics and think about what binary search is as an algorithm. We have an array, suppose one, two, three, one. Usually we have a left and right pointer. We calculate the midway point. Let's say this is the midway point. We have a pointer here. We check, is this guy a peak element? Check its left neighbor. Well, it's greater than its left neighbor. Check its right neighbor. It's not greater than its right neighbor. So we know for sure this is not a peak element. But the idea behind binary search is that we should be able to eliminate half of the search space every single time. We should be able to either say, okay, we know for sure there's no solution on this side. So we're gonna search on this side, or we should be able to say the opposite. We know for sure there's no solution here. Let's search over here. But we can't really say that with this problem. There could be a solution here or here. And it's actually possible there could be a solution on both sides of the array. So let me say this slowly. This is going to be a modified binary search where we don't necessarily have to eliminate half of the search space every single time. We're just looking for a single peak element. So we just have to be sure that the side that we decide to search on, whether it's this side or this side, we have to be sure that the side does have a peak element. Maybe there's a peak element on both sides, doesn't matter. We just have to be sure that there is one on the side that we're searching. If this is not a peak element, how do we know which side is guaranteed to have a peak element? Well, let me show you a very simple example. Let's suppose that our array was monotonically increasing. So these points kind of represent the values of our array. Is this a peak element? No. Is this a peak element? No. Is this one? No. Is this one? Yes, it is because it's greater than its left neighbor and it doesn't have a right neighbor. So this is a peak element. So if we were running our binary search on this array and we looked at this point, and we saw that this value is not a peak element, so we're not gonna search here. Which side do we wanna search on, the left side or the right side? We're going to go on the right side because even though we can't see the entire array, we see that its right neighbor is greater than it. So maybe this is a peak element. Maybe this point doesn't exist and the value is actually somewhere down here. So we know this is not a peak element, but this is greater than its left neighbor and it's also greater than its right neighbor. That's a possibility, 
But even if it's not true, even if this value doesn't exist and it's actually all the way up here, look, it's still guaranteed that there's a peak element because all the way at the right, either this is going to be monotonically increasing, which guarantees that there's going to be a peak element on this side of the array, or it's not monotonically increasing, which means one of these points, suppose this one is going to be down here, or maybe, you know, there's a few more points and one of those is going to be below. So like this one would be all the way down here. And in that case, it's also guaranteed that this is a peak element as well as this being a peak element. Can you kind of see the intuition now? Either this portion of the array is monotonically increasing, which guarantees a peak element, or it's not monotonically increasing, which means that there's going to be a dip somewhere, which also guarantees that there's a peak element. And that's true because we know for sure that this is not a peak element, but its neighbor is greater than it. So it's already increasing here and it might keep increasing or it might dip somewhere. Now, the opposite could have been true as well. It could have been going downwards. It could have been monotonically decreasing. So if we looked at this value and saw it's not a peak element, which side are we going to decide to search on? This side, because its left neighbor is greater, so we're guaranteed that there's going to be a peak element here because it's monotonically decreasing which means all the way at the left is going to be a peak element, or there's going to be a dip somewhere, maybe here or maybe here, which guarantees that there's going to be a peak element. So if we are running binary search and our mid value, suppose in this case over here is not a peak element, we're going to search on the side that has a neighbor value that's greater. And we're guaranteed to have a neighbor value that's greater because if we didn't, if this was like one, for example, and this is two and this is one, then by definition, this is a peak element. So if this value is not a peak element, we're guaranteed that one of its neighbors are going to be greater than it. And that's the side that we're going to search on. It's really that simple. I know it's probably not simple to come up with, but once you understand it, it does make a lot of sense. So now wrapping our binary search up, we're going to take our left pointer and shift it to be mid plus one. So it's going to be over here now. And then we're going to recalculate the mid pointer to be left plus right divided by two, which I think is going to be over here. So then we're going to check, is this the peak element? We're going to compare it to its left neighbor. It's greater. We're going to compare it to its right neighbor. It's also greater. So this is the solution. We return the index in this case, I believe. Yep, over here. And since this is binary search, it's running in log n time, constant memory. So now let's code it up. So this is mostly going to be a cookie cutter binary search. We're going to initialize our left pointer to be zero, our right pointer to be all the way at the end, length minus one. And then we're going to have our while loop while our left pointer is less than or equal to right. We know for sure that we're going to return within this loop. So we don't really need to put like a return statement out here. So I'm not going to bother with that. But we're going to calculate the midway point. We could say left plus right divided by two, but it's possible that that overflows. A way to make sure that it never overflows is to do it like this. Basically, take the distance between right and left, which is right minus left, divide that by two, and then add that to the left pointer. This is basically another way to calculate the midway point that just guarantees that it's not going to overflow. Most of the time, you won't need to do this in coding interviews, but I think it's helpful to know how to do it. Now we're going to check, is the left neighbor greater than the value at index M? How do we check that? Well, basically check the value at index M is less than its left neighbor at M minus one. If that was true, we would say we're going to search on the left side. So we say our right pointer is going to be mid minus one. Now there's one catch here. There's one edge case. What if M is equal to zero. In that case, is it greater than its left neighbor? No. So we are going to check that M is greater than zero. It's not equal to zero. It's greater than zero. And this is true. That also helps us because then we will never get an index out of bounds error here. And we can do the same thing to check if its right neighbor is greater. 
So I'm gonna copy and paste the above and just change it up a bit. Instead of checking if M is greater than zero, we're gonna check if M is less than the rightmost position of the array, which is length of nums minus one and the value right of it, which is not M minus one, it's M plus one is greater than it. So if this is true, if it's right neighbor is greater, that means we're gonna search on the right side. So we're gonna say left is equal to M plus one. So we have the two cases where we're either gonna search on the left side or on the right side, but if we don't do either of these, that means we for sure found the solution. So else is the case where we found the peak element and we want to return the index, which is M. So that's the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.